Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar um, with the topic CAD CAM CNC. Um, my name is Michael Wiedel. I'm an NC trainer in the Heidenheim training department in uh, Bavaria in Germany in Trondreut. And today I want to give you some information for especially CAD CAM program and how the CAM program should look like if you want to have a very good surface on the um, on your milling workpiece together with the Heinlein controls. Um, I will now do a presentation and if you have questions please use the question box and there um, write in your questions and after the presentation I can answer these questions. Um, okay, now we start with our presentation. So CAD CAM CNC there we need uh, some steps to get our workpiece. At first, we need the CAD system. In the CAD system, we create our um, 3D model. Um, there we can use different ways to create this um, model. Um, for example, we can use uh, NURBS or um, splines or different things or also um, polygon um, modeling. and these are different ways to create a CAD model. There are advantages and disadvantages of every um, way to create it. So the most important thing in the 3D model is that there are um, no um, overlapping from um, parts inside of the CAD model because when we um, make um, faults in the um, construction of the 3D model. This we will see later on our um, last step in our um, milling contour on the milling surface. There we will see if there are, for example, problems or um, faults in the CAD system. The next step is the CAM. The CAM system we need for the pass generation and also for compensating the tool. So there we decide if we want to do it with an end miller or with a ball nose cutter or um, also the um, way um, of milling the material, for example, for roughing, finishing, different jobs. And in this we will do in the CAM system. And then we come to the CNC, so the Heidenhain topic here, um, because we have um, not only the control, we have um, motors, we have um, the measurement systems and everything. And with all these together, we want to become the best surface on the milling machine. Therefore, Heidenhain is responsible for the program interpreter, for the motion control, of course, for the tolerance, and also we need to um, watch after the axis, how fast we get the axis in, on speed and everything, and this all belongs to topics from the CNC control. And of course, only with CNC control we cannot mill anything, we also need the uh, mechanics and there we have our um, feed rates and the machine and the drives and everything and also we need to compensate tolerances from the mechanical machine. And with all these topics together we want to become the best surface quality on the milling machine. So starting now with the CAD system, so we need our 3D model. And here we see two different kinds of um, creating a 3D model. Um, the car um, is constructed with a poly polygon construction. So you see these are all small tree angles and we need to put the tree angles together and then um, over the direction of the tree angles we get the new surface. Um, when you use such polygon modeling, it's important that um, the CAD system needs to put the tree angles side by side. So no ov overlapping between the tree angles. If you have an overlap here, then it could happen that this um, overlap brings a small change of the direction 
during the milling process. So this is often just one micrometer or less, but this is a um, stop on the um, feed rate for the control because the control must drive this point and so we can um, we will see this fault later on our milling surface. Another way is uh, NURBS, non-uniform rational B splines. This is the um, green picture and here you see um, it's like an um, it's like a shirt or anything and you just um, put on the shirt you put different um, different points where you hold the shirt and if you move one point then the complete contour will change so it's very good for um, long or flat surfaces for example the um, roof of the car so there you can use it very good but there it's not so good to make a detailed um, with a detailed contour with sharp um, with sharp corners and everything there it's better to use the polygon modeling and if you want to use um, mechanical input uh, ma mathematic input you can use splines where you can for example for um, airplanes where you can use a fixed form for it When you um, work with 3D models, there you have different memory formats for um, make an exchange. At first you have the DXF. In the DXF um, is normally 2D drawing. This you can open uh, on the control with the DXF converter and you can um, extract uh, contours or uh, milling positions for your NC program. And then you have IHS and STEP. This is um, format for 3D models. You can also open it on the control, um, but only with a viewer, so you can not get any information out of this um, 3D models from IHS or STEP. But you can use IHS and STEP to make an exchange from the CAD system to the CAM system. So there you often have um, CAD neutral formats, this is, for example, IHS or STEP, and you have CAD um, spe specific formats. For example, if you have um, from one um, company the same CAD system and CAM system, so so-called integrated um, solutions. This is an advantage if, if you say, okay, I have an integrated CAM system in my CAD system, because if you transfer the 3D model from the CAD to the CAM system, you will not lose any information from your CAD system. If you use neutral formats, it often happens that information out of your CAD system um, will get lost when you transfer it in the CAM system. So there is no um, there is no rule that they, you should use um, um, specific format or neutral format. So if you have the CAD system from one um, software company and the scam system from another, then you need just a transfer um, format which fits best for two for these two systems. In the CAM programming, so CAM program is a very useful um, way to create CNC programs. So in the CAM program you have different um, opportunities to create um, milling passes for roughing and finishing for different tools and everything. Um, you also have um, inspection for um, collision with the tool holder and everything. And of course a simulation to see the um, result of your um, program in the CAM system. But with the CAM system you will not get an NC program. There you need um, the post processor for it. So the CAM system saves all the mach machine specific um, information in the CL data form program. There are all the information in it but you cannot um, use this CL data for your NC machine. There you need the post processor. The post processor makes out of this CL data program and program an NC program for your control. And of course, as um, 
the customer, you decide how the NC program out of the post processor looks like. So it should normally look like if you program it by hand when you are doing um, a program by your own. So there should also be a structure inside comments. The um, Post processor should use sub programs for safe position for um, resetting everything, and what's also a good way um, Q parameters to use it for um, the feed rate. So if you want to do changing in the NC program, for example, for the feed rate, then you can use only when you only need to change one Q parameter, and so all the the program all the Q um, parameter where the Q parameter is used is the feed rate also changed there. On the CNC control, this is of course the um, product overview of Heidenhain, so we are not only um, developing and selling the controls, we also sell the motors, the length measurement system, the angle measurement system, and so this is um, what Heidenhain will do, so we deliver everything around the mechanical machine. And so it's for us it's very important to that the customer also use the uh, measurement systems from Heidenhain, especially for um, the length measurement system and the angle measurement system if we want to do a really high accuracy milling process. This is now the process um, from the 3D model to the workpiece. So at first we have the CAD system where we create the 3D model for our workpiece. The next step is the CAM program. After the CAM program we need the post processor to get the NC program. Then we come to the um, NC control. There we have the kinematic which the control needs to know the, how the machine looks like. Then the control technology, also the machine errors. So um, if the machine, the machine is a me mechanical machine, so there are errors in the axis and in the spindle. And but if the um, if we can reproduce the errors, then we can also um, very good um, compensate these errors. And the last step is then the finished workpiece. And on the finished workpiece you see how good your process chain is working here. If there are faults on the workpiece, then you need to check where the faults will come from. For example, if you um, doing different, uh, if you're doing an inclined milling with different angles and you have a step between two um, angles, then perhaps the kinematic model of the um, of the machine is not correct so what the control um, what the, uh, the kinematic model which saved in the control is not the real model what the con what the uh, machine is look like so in this there you can use for example kinematics opt to optimize the kinematic here Also important is the different output formats of NC programs. So how should an NC program look like or which um, opportunities do I have when I want to do an output for the NC programs here. Of course, Heidenhain's most important language is the plain language, the so-called CLAR text. Um, this um, NC programming language we developed in 1967. Uh, 1976, sorry, and from this on we just um, developed it more and more and this is a very easy um, NC programming language and it looks like um, not the Dean ISO code, it's his um, an own language so we do not say G1 or G0, we say we want to have a line, so this is an L. And this, for example, here we have the program for a three-axis program, so linear with x, y, and z. And we also have up to five axes, for example, linear x, y, and z, and then two round axes a and z. So this depends, of course, on your machine, which round axis do you have on your machine, and then you can program these axes here. Um, what is important when we want to use a um, 
plain language program for our answer output NC program output. Um, a very important thing is the four decimal places. So this is very easy to change in the post processor. There you should look like um, that you always bring out four decimal places. Also that you use the control functions so that the CAM system will not always linearize, linearize the um, circles for example. So you should use um, CC and C, so circle center and circle, or CT or CR. So this then brings out that the program will not be so long. And also, if you um, want to do um, precision fits, um, then you should use the radius compensation. Then it's easier because then you you work really with the radius or with the exact radius of the tool table, and then just use RR or RL for finishing, for example. Next step is a vector program. Um, vector program is. Um, the people do not often use the vector programs, but it's a very good way to make a program output with vector programs. Because um, in a vector program, you have an LN, you see here the LN, and X, Y, and that. This is always the end point of this sentence. And then you have two different vectors. The, the, one, the first vector is the N vector. This is for the tool radius compensation and the second vector is the t-vector. It's for the orientation of the tool axis. So, and you see here, we don't know for which round axis the machine should use here, because there is only tx, ty, and tz. But there is no a, b, or c. So, the control just calculates the position of the round axis just with the information out of the kinematic which round axes are available at the machine. So if you have, if you have a machine with an um, A A hat and C hat, then um, so A and C is in the hat, then the control will just calculate the T vector and brings out the position for the A and C axis for this T vector. So if you use the vector program, then you are you can program machine neutral, so you can use the same program on a uh, machine with uh, B uh, B C table with A C hat with A hat and C table. So there you are really free to use the program very as a neutral program for five axis milling. Also here we need seven decimal places for the n and t vector, and also the n vector must always be um, perpendicular to the surface. So this is very important. The n vector must be always perpendicular to the um, surface of my model. Of course, the machine neutral program output is a very important thing. You can also use with the um, n, with the vector program, you can use a radius compensation. So you can um, imagine you have a program. The program is a um, program for a diameter 10 ball nose cutter, but in the machine you do not have a um, diameter um, 10 ball nose cutter. You only have a diameter 9 um, ball nose cutter. So normally you need to come back to your CAM system, need to change the diameter of the tool and recalculate it again and bring it back to the machine. So this takes time and so you can use the 3D radius compensation. So you only program in the tool call that the delta radius 2 minus um, 0 0.5, so from radius 5 to 4.5 and then you can use the same program which was normally calculated for um, tool diameter 10 with a tool diameter 9. So this is the tool radi the 3D radius compensation. And another advantage of a vector program, you can use 3D tool comp. So before you start um, milling, you measure the exact radius of your tool and you, only, you do not um, only measure it on one point, you measure it an, on different points along the tool. And 
these values will be input in an um, in a table and also connected in the tool table and then the controls just looks um, on which point is the tool cutting at the moment so this the control know, knows from the n vector there you always know okay this p here is the cutting point and over n and x and y and and that the control knows the um, exact angle on which the tool is cutting now and then the control can correct exactly for this position the tool. Now this you can use when you need to do a really accurate milling process. Of course something what you um, should use when you um, make it an output, um, use the structure. This is very good if you have a program with um, 300,000 sentences. It's good if you have a structure that you can jump quickly from one um, milling chop to the next milling chop. Um, also important to use the Heidenhain cycles. So where it's possible of course um, normally drilling or bore milling cycles you can use easily also the Heidenhain cycles. Um, advantage of this is that the um, man at the machine can also use um, can also make a little bit changing in the NC program and for example when the um, the step of the drilling cycle is too small, then you can only change the cycle and then we are quicker here. And of course use um, radius compensation and uh, for in-client machining use M128 or TCPM. There we talk about later. Also interesting is the simulation. Um, customer often say that they do not need the um, control simulation because they have the simulation in their CAM system. This is correct, but there are some special things what you can only check in the simulation on the control. For example, um, limit switch error messages. So you clamped your workpiece and you want to know um, if it's um, possible to do this um, workpiece and on this position and so you just um, clamp your workpiece you set the datum at the workpiece and then you go to test run and there you have the blank in workspace and if you push this button then you have a machine symbol and if you press this machine symbol then the active datum from your machine side will automatically save in the test run and when you now say reset and start then the control just um, just simulates the complete program and if there is no error message because of limit switch you can be sure that the program will also run through um, completely. Also um, if there are any um, problems or any fault programming of Heidenheim cycles, positive deep for example, this can be checked in the test run. Also circle endpoint error messages. Sometimes if you only make an output of um, three decimal places, you um, get an error message because the um, circle endpoint is not, um, is not working together with the circle start point there's a tolerance and this can be a really good way just to check the program. You can also hide the um, blank form and everything that you get a really fast simulation, a very quick simulation, just to know if there are any um, error messages between the NC process. Because the worst case is you start your machine at 8 o'clock in the evening, it should run over the complete night and the machine stops at 9 o'clock because there is an error message or a wrong program cycle and everything. This is then a really bad situation and this you can fix easily just with a simulation also on the TNC control. Of course a very important topic for Heidenheim is the motion control because we are um, famous for our um, very good um, motion control so that we can do a really good surface quality on the milling machine here. 
there is a very important function is the look ahead function. This is the um, memory, the internal memory of our interpolator. So if you press NC start, the control will calculate in front because the control needs to know how the contour looks like. And there we have an example. You see it here on the right picture on the um, top on, on the um, on the diagram here. And you see we have here uh, the orange line is the contour in X and Y and in the, um, the black line is the speed of the X axis. And you see we start with the program and on the point 2 there is a corner, so not a circle, so there the control needs to just decrease the feed rate to get it a little bit slower here, just to get the correct tolerance also on this um, area here. And then you see 3, 4, the control can um, speed up here and normally at 5 and 6 there the speed should be constant. But you see at point 5 there is an, the, the feed rate goes down again. So what happens here? So in this view we cannot see it but perhaps there uh, on, the, on the point 4 there was from the construction a small overlapping. So for example there is not one point, there are two points. So a small changing of the direction and this brings out um, uh, the um, decrease of the um, feed rate here. So on the ITNC it is a machine parameter, the 7400 machine parameter says how many blocks the control is allowed to read in front, so 256, 512 or 1024. On the TNC 640 it is um, not a fixed value, it depends on the NC program. But there are um, maximum 5000 blocks in front. So this is a very um, a good value that the control will do it automatically. Another interesting function um, on the TNC 640 and 620 control is the ADP, Advanced Dynamic Prediction. Um, so you see here two um, or one work pieces with um, one time. The first work piece is without ADP and the second work piece is with ADP. So um, you see there are especially in the um, on the hill here we have some um, yeah, some faults on the contour. So this comes from um, different um, points between the um, neighbored NC programming paths here. So you see that if you watch the points here, there you have one, um, the points are not looking the same here. And ADP can fix this problem just and you um, as the man on the machine only need to activate ADP, this is not an option. You can only go into the machine parameter and there you can activate the ADP function. It's very simple and it's not an option and with ADP you get with the same NC program you get a better surface control um, especially if the CAM system um, cannot um, put the points on the correct position. So this is often not so easy for CAM system and there you see whether if it's a good CAM system or not a good CAM system. Also for this we have the dynamic position functions. There we talk about um, on, on every exhibition. Dynamic position is um, for our finishing, for surface, surface, surface finishing difficult word and there we have different functions, crosstalk compensation, active vibration damping, load position and motion adaptive control. So these are all functions for the control to get a better knowledge of the TCP, of the tool center point, of the behavior of the tool center point while the axes are moving really quickly. And there you see that um, we can just um, learn the behavior of the tool center point better and 
then we can make the machine more accurate. But we do not want to have it more accurate. We want to have it faster. So we can change the machine to a um, um, faster behavior. Then we are as accurate as before, but we are more faster. And this is exactly what we want to do with our um, dynamic precision functions. And here we have an example workpiece of this Hoover graph here. And you see for this uh, workpiece, we could um, save time of 8%. So with the same NC program, just activate the dynamic precision functions, and then the same program runs 8% faster. And this is a really interesting thing that the machine, you get it more higher, uh, you get a higher um, speed of the machine, but you have the same accuracy like before. And this is the interesting thing of dynamic precision. The next step, we want to talk about the functions for 5-axis machining. A very important function is um, TCPM, Tool Center Point Management. Um, if you do not program Tool Center Point Management and you program a sentence linear x plus 100, b minus 30, then the round axes are moving o um, around the mechanical turning point. So this is an, then you have a wrong contour and also a wrong feed rate. If you want to do, if you want to use um, it in a correct way, then you need to activate M128, and then you see the control is not longer um, turning around the mechanical turning point. The control is now calculating around the TCP, the tool center point. And then the contour is correct and feed rate is correct. So if you want to program with um, inclined machining, simultaneous machining, you always need to activate M128 or tool center point management. This is a very important thing and this needs to be inside of your post processor, of your NC program then. So M128. You can program in feed rate after the M128 function. So this feed rate limits um, the compensation movements. So be careful with this feed rate. So normally do not use this feed rate. This is um, because this makes the um, complete NC program um, slowly because then every compensation movement is limited with this function, with this maximum feed rate, and then this could um, bring out um, uh, more slowly a mill milling time. And reset, you can reset the M128 with M129. And uh, the feed rate calculation can also be selected with a machine parameter. For example, if you want to, um, that the feed rate is only for the tool center point management or the feed rate is calculated for the different um, axes which are in this sentence in the movement together. Tool center point, so TCP and TCPM, the tool center point management is the development of the M128 and there you have a little bit more um, possibilities to change, for example, the type of the program feed rate. This you can change M with M128 in the machine parameters. And with the function TCPM, there you can make it direct directly in the NC program. For example, you can decide FTCP, so the feed rate should be related to the tool tip, so only for the tool center point, or FCONT. So then the control will take the feed rate and just bring it to the axis which are um, in this um, in this sentence in the um, in movement. So for example if you want to do um, forms for wires, there you have pockets and these pockets will be milled with five axis um, simultaneous machining. So you often have um, um, a big movement of the round axis, but a really small movement on the milling surface. And that you do not get any marks on your surface, you can, for this process, you can use the FCONT. Then 
the feed rate will not be become higher than the program feed rate, for example. Another thing is the um, interpretation um, of the programmed rotary axis coordinates. With axis POS or axis spatial, axis but, you can decide if the um, NC program, the programmed rotary axis coordinates should be axis angle or spatial angle. So this is an um, opportunity, for example, if you have a TNC 640 and you want to do on, um, on a um, 3D basic rotation, so your workpiece is not clamped on the um, parallel to the machine axis, so the surface is tilted to it, then you can use the 3D basic rotation to compensate this um, this angle, and then you need to um, work with a spatial angle that every um, angle of your um, five-axis simultaneous program will be calculated with the 3D basic rotation, for example. Or you have a program which is an output for A and C, and now the machine has B and C as ro rotary axis. Then you can also use this axis spatial to let the program run also on an different machine. And then you also have the pass control axis or pass control um, so pass control axis or pass control vector. There you um, is just to a changing between um, for face milling or peripheral milling. So this is also what um, something what you cannot make with M128 for example, the decision of the pass control here. And reset is um, function reset TCPM. You find it in the special functions, program functions, and there function TCPM or reset TCPM. Another important function, what you often see in CAM programs, is the cycle 32. So the control always drives as accurate as possible. So if there is no tolerance inside of the control, then you, um, the control will stop at every um, corner, so after every line the control will stop and then go on to the next point. And this brings out uh, another good motion control, so the, um, the control is always stopping and starting and stopping and starting and this is not, a good, this is not good for the surface. So, what um, we can we can change with the cycle 32, um, there is a tolerance, um, normal tolerance in every machine. So in the machine parameters, in the machine parameter uh, 1,200, there is a standard value for the tolerance. So the control is allowed to um, to leave um, the programmed um, corner, so you see it in the um, second picture here, there you have a point and the T tolerance allows the control to make a little rounding so that you get a really a smooth um, milling surface there. And with the cycle 32 you can change this tolerance for every NC program. And important for the um, for this tolerance is the short error, the short tolerance from the CAM system. So inside of your CAM system, um, you know you have an you have your original contour, but the original contour is the um, black line here, the black contour. This is the original contour, but the CAM system cannot output exactly this contour, so the CAM system brings in small lines, so points, and this is the orange contour, and the maximum tolerance from your original contour to the um, orange contour, to the which comes out from the CAM system, is the short error. And you can use this short error for your cycle 32, just one, so um, over the tolerance, um, maximum three time, three time of the short error you can type in in this cycle 32. And this cycle 32 brings out a very smooth behavior um, during your milling 
um, process and with this you get a very good surface quality. And you also can set a tolerance for the rotary axis. For example, when you are doing 5-axis um, simultaneous machining with a ball nose cutter, there you can use this tolerance to get also a smooth, um, a smooth motion control on your milling process. So there with the cycle 32 we can decide different things. Um, for example, if we want to do um, fast machining, so for example for roughing, then we say we want to have a large um, tolerance for the cycle 32 and we also select the machine parameters with a higher jerk and acceleration and the NC data is not um, so detailed, so it's roughing, but we, we have an oversize, so we will decide later when, when finishing if we want to have an accurate surface or a clean surface. So accurate is then um, precise machining, so there we have a really small um, tolerance for cycle 32 that we do not lose so many accuracy. And on the other side, we can also decide for good surface quality. There we have an yeah, average of um, the cycle 32 tolerance. And there we make more um, a small short error. It's better for the output there. So we always need to decide if we want to do fast, smooth, or accurate milling. And this we can decide with the cycle 32 and also with selecting different settings of machine parameters. Then we also have two functions for um, make a little bit changing in the program. The first is M124. It's tolerance. And you see here in the picture we have um, a fault. So we have um, normally this should be one point, but the output here is two points. For example, when in the 3D model there was um, not a good construction and this is the output of this, so for the control it's two points. So on this point the feed rate will go down because the control needs to drive accurate two points. With M124 we can just delete every point which is under the distance 0 0.02 millimeters so the control will just ignore it and we get one point out of it. And another function M118 it's um, the hand wheel superimposition so this we um, sometimes need when we um, when we just hear at the machine that the ball nose cutter is not um, cutting good at this position because the cutting situation now is not good so I want to change the rotary axis so the inclined angle of the tool to get a better cutting situation and this I can do with M118. I just write in B 10, mil, 10, 10 degrees and then I'm allowed to um, during program run I just activate the hand wheel and I can change the angle of the B axis from the programmed value plus minus 10 degrees just to get a better cutting situation here. Also important for the um, five axis milli for five axis machining is the block processing time. Um, it's just as an information um, when, for example, you um, have a really small point-to-point -point distance in your NC program and you want to drive with a high feed rate and you are wondering why the, mach why the machine is um, stopping after some time. And this could be, um, could be together with the block processing time because in the um, in our controls we have 0 0.5 um, milliseconds or, or less for calculating one sentence and this brings out um, different um, uh, uh, the maximum feed rate for example if you have a feed uh, 
point distance of 0 0.2 millimeters, then you have a maximum possible feed rate of 24,000 millimeter per minute. And when you say, okay, I have an, a really small point-to-point -point distance, some customers say, okay, I want to have a small point distance because then I'm more accurate. But the result is that the maximum feed rate will go down um, really um, fast. So if you can imagine when we um, have one micrometer point-to-point -point distance, then we have a really um, low feed rate. And when we want to drive this with a faster feed rate afterwards, then the machine will stop when the control needs to calculate the um, blocks in front. So this is then not good for the surface here. And then we have also another um, look ahead function. It's for contour programming. So if you see it in the picture, we program the contour but our miller is bigger than the contour radius here. So normally I get an error message of um, that the tool radius is too big, but we can um, just ignore this with the function M120. After M120, you program an LA, so look ahead, so it's the number of sentences which the control is allowed to overread without an error message. And so with M120, we are allowed to program such a contour with a bigger miller, for example, for roughing, um, without getting any error message. M120 is only possible with radius correction, so only um, activated when radius compensation RL or RR is active. Some slides before we talked about um, cycle 32 and changing machine parameters. So normally it's not possible for the end user to change any um, machine parameters, but sometimes we need to change it to bring the machine to um, fast machining or accurate surface or smooth surface. And for this there are um, some OEM specific cycle, a so-called tuning cycle. And with this tuning cycle we can change the complete behavior of the machine because we only um, switch between different machine parameter subfiles inside of the control. And for the customer it's easy because the customer only has a cycle, for example, um, 332. So this depends on the OEM or the machine tool builder. And inside of the cycle, the customer says standard, exact, smooth, or rough. So it's just a parameter. And the, after this cycle, the machine um, will change the complete behavior by changing the machine parameters. And this is a very easy way to bring the machine in different behaviors. And we had this um, work piece here, and there we have just um, examples of the um, of the time here. So you see, with the default configuration, we have a time of two minutes thirty-seven. With the accurate um, value, we have four po uh, four minutes f uh, forty-three seconds. With smooth, we have 2 minutes um, 58, and with roughing, we have 2 minutes 29. So you can just decide, and of course on the um, quality of your surface, you can decide um, how the um, workpiece should look like. So of course when I want to do roughing, I make the machine more aggressive. If I want to um, make, um, if you want to have a smooth surface, then I say, okay, machine or cycle set number two. And this is a very good way to um, change the behavior of the machine. So just look at your machine at cycle def and there on the second floor you often have then the OEM cycles or just look at the manuals of your machine here. Also an interesting function, the global program settings. Um, it's on the ITNC 530. With the global program settings, you can change um, the behavior of the NC program, but you do not need to change the NC program. So it's just um, 
mask over your NC program, and there you can, for example, um, make a super uh, hand wheel superimposition. You can um, mirror axis. Um, you can work with a limit and so these are different things and you do not need to change the um, the NC program and also for hand wheel superimposition you can also save the value what you changed for example for the virtual tool axis or the um, changing of the rotary axis and this is a really good way which um, the mold and die builder wanted to have inside of the NC control. And also a very important function is the kinematics opt. So we've seen at the beginning um, of the presentation that if the kinematic model of the which is saved in the control is not the same kinematic model which is in real at the machine, then we get um, problems on the, our uh, um, milling surface. And with kinematics opt, we can just optimize the um, rotary points of the round axis. So inside of the control, if there's a round axis, for example A, then we have a transformation in the Z axis and the Y axis to the turning point of the A axis. So this is, um, this is set one time when the machine um, is, is built up and then nobody changed this but if you see on your milling surface that you um, that it's that we have not the accurate um, result then we can work with kinematics opt just to make the machine better again so we have a diff we have also a um, um, webinar for kinematics opt so if you're interested in it it's at the moment a german version but there will be also later an english version for it So that was now um, yeah, quick overview over um, some important topics, especially for the CAD, CAM and CNC program. So it's very easy to create a CAM program, it's for especially for um, roughing. For finishing, it's done a it's, it is a little bit harder to um, get a really good program, but it's also important to get a correct output of the NC program. And there, for example, a very important thing is the uh, four decimal places, for example. And then you also have on the control some functions which help you to get the best milling surface on the control and on your milling machine. So now I say thank you for your attention and if there are any questions do not hesitate to use the question box. I see there are some questions already inside. Okay, then I say thank you. Thank you for your attention and if there are any questions um, later, please use the forum of the um, industry arena to um, get the answer for the questions or you can also contact Heidenhain. Um, therefore, you can use the um, email address. It's 3103 at heidenhain.de. So there you can contact Heidenhain and you can also get the answers for your questions here. So now I say thank you for your attention. I wish you a nice day and a nice weekend and I hope to hear you later for the next webinar in English or German. Okay, have a nice day. Bye-bye.